All right, everybody. It's Alex Williamson here with the secret history of living inside of your aquarium. I hope you can see that I have an excess of snails and a fish that wants in a box. But what I'm going to do with this XXX, XX, 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 uh, with this abundance of snails is which came out of another tank, by the way, that uh, I was feeding cucumbers to the plecos, and I was like, holy moly, look at all those snails. So, well, they're not wanting to come out. Let me let me try to scoop some more out. Hold on, you'll have a, a very personal view with these snails for a moment. Uh, apologies. But we're going to try to put them right down here. There we go where we can see the pea puffers doing what they do best, which is making friends with snails. Making friends with snails, welcoming them to the tank, uh, playing catch and hide and go seek. Uh, they're just, they're, they're the best of pals. In all seriousness, uh, snails, are one of the main food items that puffers, pea puffers, and larger puffers too, enjoy uh, eating. Now, snails reproduce fast enough in captivity and in the wild that obviously if you have an aquarium, you realize that no matter how many puffer fish there are, you will probably continue to find snails here and there. Some snails are hide and seek type snails and they just disappear off the radar for a while, whatnot. And others are uh, gonna get nabbed right away. But if we just sit back for a second here and we wait to see out of the mess of weeds Who's in the mess of weeds right now? I don't see any puffers, do you guys? That should change in a minute. As we see that some of these snails have fallen on hard times. And actually, we have a crib eating a snail as well. So let's see if we can catch... Of course, he's going to stop when I film him. But uh, a young crib, definitely, they will also eat snails. Uh, Cribensis fish will eat the snails. Uh, no problem. And if you break the shell on the snail, as the puffer fish do... Uh, they have absolutely no problem in eating, uh, or in, you know, like other fish coming and eating what, what they've cracked open. So, it's a, it's a big, uh, meal ticket item. Now, I'm hoping we didn't serve too many back into the tangle, because it looks like we did get a lot of snails that kind of drifted back in there. But, there are six puffers in here. And I assure you, they're up to no good somewhere in this tank. And they should be coming out any minute now. All I'm seeing is more young cribs. And the cribs are a really cool story in this tank. Uh, I'll tell you while we wait for the new appearance of the puffer. Uh, the cribs... Uh, hopefully we'll see some babies here uh, cruising through the tank younger than this this one. This guy's from the last batch of babies. But we've got these adult cribs. Maybe you can see them. There's the female right back there. She's got her purple belly and her orange fin, yellow, uh, yellow uh, mouth. And uh, she has babies. And then protects her clutch of babies pretty fiercely with her husband, they, or they both protect the, the babies, and then they kind of scoot them around. The husband just popped out right over here. We'll see if he comes back. Maybe we'll step away from the tank. You know, pufferfish 
do have the best eyes of any fish in the aquarium uh, world. So here's a puffer now coming up. This looks like a male with how bright his colors are, the, the big blue uh, spots, green and blue spots on the back, and the nice yellow rather than a tan color. Uh, the males are pretty flashy, and you can see he's just kind of cruising around slowly checking out what is in the tank. Um, meanwhile, I was going to say that the cool story about the puffers and the cribs, and these are pulcher, one is a pulcher cribensis, the male is, and the other one is a tiniatus crib that is the bupindi variety, which a lot of people don't recommend and also don't want people mixing different strains because they come from very localized, specialized ecosystems that are unique and they have, you know, different colors because they've been separated for thousands of years into different streams and areas where mudslides and things have cut off populations or waterfalls and erosion have done likewise and so when we look at them you'll see a wide range of colors but also sometimes different behaviors and when you breed them together uh, you can lose that or you can double down and get a little bit of all of those behaviors that are ingrained so as long as you're not letting your hybridized uh fish out of the tank, it's generally considered okay to have them interbreed, but you just don't ever want to, um, you know, put those back into circulation, calling them something else, or, I mean, just period, just don't, if you're going to let them uh, hybridize, don't let them out of your sight. Just like uh, rainbow fish, if if you're gonna let them uh, breed with one another, just keep them uh, in your care. And if you can't care for them anymore, I suppose uh, find a good friend who will take care of them and not let them out of their sight. Uh, as well as, uh, I mean, I hate to say it because it's a bummer, but possibly put them down uh, rather than uh, keep them around to pollute the gene lines of these very special and uh, increasingly rare fish as far as uh, habitat goes. So what I'm zooming on here, zooming in on, I need to enunciate, but is the fact that I was talking about these cribs, I was talking about these puffas, these, uh, these, uh, P. Diddies, and, uh, the baby puffers, uh, appeared about, oh, here we go, here comes the hunt, the hunt may be on if I get away, uh, the, there we go, is he going to hit that one? It's a big juicy one. Um, the puffers had babies and they were getting eaten. So, Crebensis actually follow their babies all over the place and protect them. So, the baby puffers fell in line and just started hiding in with the Crebensis babies in the tank. And they're not even supposed to be, like, uh, fish that could get along, or... I mean, puffers are t usually in a species tank. There we go. And we all of a sudden, we see more puffers. Uh, and what they do, if you notice, bam, that shell has a, a hole in it. It has a concussive hole, just like a bullet when you look at a window. And there goes another snail. And what they do is they take their teeth and they bash down, they have a beak. And all they need to do is break that surface tension of the shell. You can see a bubble coming out where that snail 
has let go of his like swim bladder equalizing bladder and uh, now that that snail is immobilized it does not have a way to float to the top uh, or whatnot and see there's a baby crib that just swam by and you could see how a young puffer looks pretty similar and so that is how I've now got, well I said six, but there's actually quite a few more puffer babies in this picture now as well. But they are quite small, and uh, they kind of stay hidden most of the time. But they're growing up, and it's thanks to, thanks to the cribs, so pretty cool. Um, and... I'm just going to let you guys watch because this is what you're here for, right? So this looks like probably a female puffer. Get out of the way, Tetras. This looks like a female puffer. And she's just she's just a murderer. Look at her. She's just been bashing all these different uh all these different uh shrimp or sorry. They did wipe out the shrimp in here, by the way. But bashing all the different snail shells and then not even taking the time to eat them. It looks like they're just busy smacking them. So if you can see that, you can see right there, all they need to do, they're going around and they're just executing. I mean, they're brutal fish. They just go around and they just bash a hole in all of these snails and then they basically hope that that incapacitates them uh, so that they can't float up with their swim bladder like snails do and so that they can't uh, crawl away they actually puffers have this kind of strategic spot that they attack usually which is kind of right after the first bend in the in the snail shell uh, like halfway around the bend and it seems to really stop the snails and these little fish which maybe in rate sorry I know this is nauseating uh, but down here in this algae and tangle of weeds and stuff there is there are some puffer babies and some crebensis babies. So I don't know if you can make out which ones are which, but they're in here. Ooh, I just heard that one. So you can actually hear the crack and the snap when when these puffers bite down. And uh, we've got a snail that just unfortunately dropped right into the arms of these puffers. And as you see, the other fish are circling around thinking, okay, we're going to get food too, because these puffers are just, as I said, they immobilize their prey. And these little guys, they don't seem that concerned about eating it right away. They just want to kill it, make sure that it's not going to swim away, and then they sometimes actually waste it, but most of the time they uh, they come back in an hour or whatever and end up uh, smacking them some more and cracking open those shells. So, see that? He actually nipped, or she nipped there. Um, and here comes another one probably. Um, but as you can see, they just wholesale slaughter, and you can see that eye, each eye is independent, and they say they can see 30 feet outside the tank, so these puffers are really comfortable with me, and they're just comfortable in general with, uh, being a puffer in this tank with other fish and everything, like, they just don't let it distract them too much. Um, so it's kind of an interesting adaptation.
but um, I just wanted to show you guys how they do this and you know how they hunt they can hunt in teams also like little velociraptors uh, they're they're pretty interesting little critters and uh, I would highly recommend getting some if you haven't had them before. They do have some specific needs, and uh, there's lots of great videos out there. Uh, Corey of Aquarium Co-op has gone over uh, pea puffer care or Indian dwarf puffer, um, you know, pebble puffer, um, pygmy puffer. They have a lot of different names, but uh, the, the Indian dwarf puffer is probably the, the most common and see that was a snail that has already been smashed and here we're gonna see another snail getting smashed again and so once they decided that they've kind of incapacitated the snails in the area they then move in and eat what they have smashed by using that beak which looks kind of like a parrot beak in their mouth uh, and they actually have to you they actually have to eat hard things or their beaks can get too long and they can have problems just like a rabbit or rodents can have problems and so what they do is they crack open the shells and things with their beak that in turn keeps their beak uh, nice and I guess in shape the way it needs to be and then we uh, we kind of see w why they need to eat hard-shelled uh, creatures in their diet. You can't just feed them uh, food from the store that's uh, that's you know pre-prepared pellets and flakes. Because they really have uh, special needs in that sense. And so if you're going to have one, make sure that you go that extra mile. That you uh, have maybe another tank. That's the simplest way. And that you have some extra uh, snails to share with your puffers. That's what I do is I just let them get out of control in my shrimp tank or in other tanks. And then I just uh, put a piece of cucumber in for the shrimp and for the plecos in the other tanks and have that. So I hope this is plenty of footage for you guys. You can see that the puffers have all kind of come out of the nooks and crannies. Um, they do double up on each other's work a bit. And now the next hour or two will probably consist of they'll probably hunt for some more but then they'll kind of each pick a section and uh, finish cracking them and then they use that sharp beak uh, as part of like a suction or a funnel and that allows them to slurp up the contents of the shell and uh, They've just evolved amazingly well, just so perfectly for this purpose. And it's just always fascinating to me that you've got these puffer fish and they go after shrimp and snails and mussels and clams that are so much bigger than them. So... This one is interesting because it's dead, and he knew it. So he swam past. He actually chased off another fish. These fish don't know how big they are. <laughs> and then uh, moved on. And what you're seeing going on here with these three specific puffers is going on with the other three on the other part of the tank. And soon we'll have babies moving in to eat some of what these guys work on. Uh, but it's just kind of an interesting practice. I don't know if it's if it's so that predators who are also eating the snails and things, uh, they crack them open, and then that lets the pea puffers uh, essentially assess 
the situation and sit back, you know, the half hour it takes them to crack things open. Then they just sit back and see who's coming that could be a threat to them. And then they can just slowly hide in the bushes and pop out and eat a snail or two or drag a snail back into the bushes. Um, and it works pretty darn well for them because they live in waters with some insane fish in them. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, if you want to learn more about these fish, uh, more about uh, keeping them, like I said, lots of good sources online. I'll probably do another video. I have also have a past video. Um, they're supposed to be in a species tank, according to most people, but I've been able to keep mine in a community tank. But what works for one person doesn't always work for everyone, so I do not actually uh, condone doing this. Um, I did it slowly and observed very carefully and have also had these uh, puffers as well as the other species in the tank uh, for many years off and on and at different combos, different points in time. All right, guys, I have talked enough, but if you made it this far, why don't you hit that like button for me pretty please? And if you want more updates, hit that subscribe and that bell icon. And after that, if you're still like, man, I'm pumped from that puffer footage, I really want to get a puffer, you can go to aquaticarts.com. They should have some pea puffers right about now. Uh, and if you use the code, all in caps, secret shrimp 15 you can get 15% off, and you'll uh, get your puffers, but they're going to be working with me in the future, starting this week, actually, uh, and we'll be doing a giveaway for, you know, $50 gift cards and things like that, so if you use that code, SECRET SHRIMP, all in caps, no spaces, Secret Shrimp 15 at Aquarium or AquaticArts.com. Uh, you'll get the 15% off plus you'll get entered.